is an update on my smart load and the settings I'm getting 2.4 kilowatt on the panels which is 4.4 max so I'm getting just over half you can see a little bit of shadow not much and that's because it's a bit cloudy it's not fully cloudy it's just like a misty cloud and you'll see <clears throat> my uh, usage there is 2.3 uh, two of that is a, a geezer or with a 2 kilowatt element in there and the rest will go into the battery at this stage it's pulling from the battery you can see going up and then if there's a little bit more if there's 2.9 whatever it'll push back again I've set my limits between 95 and 90 in other words if it goes up to 95 the smart load switch is on if it goes drop if it um, supports with the battery and the battery goes down to 90 it'll switch it off that's got to be above 2000 if it drops be below 2000 for more than a minute it'll also switch off I expect this might just switch off but that's fine if it goes above yeah if it goes above 2 kilowatts then it'll switch on again uh, if it goes below 2 and the 2000 watt element switches off then there's not load anymore in other words that will not show 2 anymore, it will only show the 0.34 there and it will never go be, uh, up to 2 unless there's a bit of battery to be charged so I always leave a bit of battery so that that battery then becomes the load and it will push the solar to the maximum whatever they, uh, you've got on the roof whatever sun is available so the battery will then push it up to 2, it will switch on again if it gets uh, above 2 so it's right on the limit at the moment Right, so there's my settings. I've got smart load on, that's on the Gen Port use. Smart load on, 2000 watts. Switches on at 95, so both those parameters must be met for the smart load to switch on. If it drops below 2000 for more than a minute, or drops below 90 for more than a minute, it'll switch off. On my main DB, I've got a actually an earth leak, it's, it switches a disconnect. And there I've got my auto change over. It's on now the smart load, so it'll go to that position automatically. I can then use my Wi-Fi on my uh, wi this Wi-Fi timer on my phone and set a schedule, let's say five to seven in the afternoon, just in case it was cloudy and this smart load didn't switch on and my geezer is cold, so that's kind of a backup. That comes straight from ESCOM. Um, so that's my backup and fail safe. In the winter I'll probably use this quite a lot more. This is just free energy. I'm just pushing it into both geysers, the one after the other. I've got a little smart load DB, which is my main smart load. That is actually the first geyser, number one, which is heated. That's the top bathroom. That goes first, and that's that middle light. It's got a one there. That normally goes uh, white. Once that one is heated up, and the thermostat switches it off this relay will click and it will switch over to the second geezer that's number two that's the 200 liter lower geezer and then that's the one that's on at the moment so in other words the first one is is hot it's already heated if that cools down someone uses that hot water and it cools down and the thermostat switches on the blue will go out and the white will go on again because that's my primary one that one will switch on uh, and it'll switch off the second one with this relay. The second one will only be on after the first one is heated. Then the second one will be heated. Once that one is heated and the thermostat switches it off, then the load will drop and the PV will drop below 2000 watts and it'll switch off the smart load. That is just smart load presence. And this one will also switch off. There isn't a way for me to see that the thermostat actually has switched off on this one. I can do something it's not necessary really but that's a way for me to see if there is smart load whether it's the first or the second geezer 